where do I start? Well, well, let's start in 1976. 1976, I'm like four years old. Yeah, four, yeah, four, five years old. Four or five years old. In there somewhere. In Death Valley in a 1976 Jeep Cherokee. Narrow track. Gold. Two door. Sweet rig. If you had one of those now in mint condition, oh yeah. Good times. Badass rig. Anyway, that's where I started. That was uh, my stepdad's friend had this rig and he took us on this trip. We went all through there. Many years later, 30 years later, I went back in my own two-door Jeep Cherokee, but this one in 1993. How about that in 2000? And, you know, you, you, you grow up, you realize later on, you don't think about when you do things, why you bought something, or how you got there. Uh, my stepdad, he had a four-door brown xp e Dodge Straight 6 pickup truck. It was like a, it's a really ugly one. It was before the square headlights, the round headlights. It was a 70s model. I don't know, like a 74, 70, I don't know, 74, 75, 76, something, somewhere in there. 70s model, the really ugly one. Well, in 2006, I bought a gold four-door Dodge straight six diesel pickup truck four-wheel drive didn't think anything of it but then you think about it later on where did that come from why did you buy that that's why I bought that subliminal stuff just like this 2002 2003 Rubicon I'm sitting up there Buck Island Lake with my buddy Andy we're getting drunk we're drinking beers we're hanging out here some people come through huh walk up to the trail what do we see the brand new Jeep Wrangler Rubicon edition they're running them through this guy was all fucked Two fucking broken front axles. It's all jacked up. They're tired. They just want to get down to the Rubicon Springs. Have a beer. They can't have a beer. We offer them one. No. So we're drinking beer. We're there laughing at them. Talking shit. Drinking beer. Where, where am I going with this? Well, full circle. What did I finally buy? In 2013, Super Bowl Sunday. I'm bored. It was at the time I wanted to buy a house, and then I realized, fuck, I can't afford to buy a house. Fuck, I'll just buy a fucking other Jeep. And that's what I bought. A 2004 Jeep Wrangler. Rubicon. Yeah, it's got the tractor engine. That's the engine you want. You don't want that four banger garbage. I don't think they had a Rubicon that had a four banger, but whatever. I, I don't know that much about it, these rigs. This is the only one I've ever owned. Only one I really will ever own, maybe? Eh, you can't say never say never, but I'm never going to know another TJ, because this is just the most archaic vehicle. Like, what the hell were they thinking when they made this in 2004? This thing, I, I understand, with my 1993 Jeep Cherokee car, 
I have two of them. One of them is my daily driver. Um, but anyway. So this one... They changed some crap on it. They got rid of the distributor. They went with coil on plug. I don't know what that did. Didn't help the mileage. I'll tell you that. Maybe it helped with emissions. They got like a million cats on this thing. Like ten fucking goddamn oxygen sensors or whatever. Uh, only thing I've done. The awesome Odyssey battery. Very cool. I put a super expensive switch system on here. No regrets though. Made by Americans in America. Shout out. Yeah. Good job guys. Um Banks power well, Banks power. Whatever. Not sure that this did a whole lot. But what did do a whole lot is this uh, I throw away. My buddy from Jeepers and Creepers, he's got a friend in Texas that makes these. And I got one on the Jeep Chero car with a 4.7 stroker. It's uh, 62, 63 milliliter for Bate. Big difference. Made a big difference on this car. Um, really wakes up this engine. I like it. Um, no regrets there. Fair price. Basically, that's it. I got some uh, one inch motor mount lifts and engine side brackets from SFR. Good shit. That's about it under hood. On the front. Got a rusty anti rock. Works great. Bumper savvy. Eighteen pounds. With a winch under 70 pounds with a bro bar and all that shit on there. Super lightweight. Super good shit. Highly recommend. Good stuff. Under here. You just got the basic uh, rough stuff. Diff cover on the pseudo Dana 44. You got an SFR aluminum tie rod. You got orange things under there. They were chrome, but I couldn't afford the Molly. Um, ain't gonna break those. Super smooth, good shit. Under here. Aluminum savvy control arms. Savvy Under Armour. The stock belly pan hung down four inches below the frame rails. This one hangs down like three quarters of an inch. Super badass, super lightweight. It's a lot of mods you gotta do to make it fit. You gotta smash the tranny tunnel to make the transfer case fit. You need a cable shifter for the, uh, the transfer case. You need an inch and a quarter body lift. I modified it. I made a plate to make this all flush mount under here. Other things you need, you will need a double carbon drive shaft. I'm running the Tom Woods one. Tom Woods, shout out. Called that old bastard. He was still answering the phone. I've ordered since 2000, like, five drive shafts from him. 
called his ass up. He answered the phone. He's like, oh, yeah, I can take care of you, no problem. Super nice dude, whatever. Want to talk me or off. Super good dude. Bye, shit. Whatever. Good times. Under the back. <laughs> Fucking dropping shit over here. Never mind. Mm. Dynamax. Smashed multiple times. Cut back multiple times. Keeps getting smashed. This last time I can't cut it back much more, so I kind of straightened it out. Um, another savvy aluminum gas tank skid. Started cracking. Mm, it's not getting any worse, but whatever. We'll run it. It's fine. Another uh, rough stuff deal in the back. Looks a little leaky. Whatever. Stock rear bumper. Trimmed and capped by me. Hmm. Yeah. This corner keeps getting hammered for whatever reason. I don't, I don't run anything hardcore. Hardest thing I've run is Rubicon in this, but it keeps getting smashed. Little JDM fix with zip ties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing is... This is a Genrite corner. Look at that rust. Now look at this other side. Look at that. Oh my god. Oh, holy shit. Yeah, look at the rust on this fucking thing. It's bubbling up through the uh, powder cap. Ugh. Yeah, look at that. That's freaking gross. Look at this. So, I can understand if you're like going mudding or something and your shit's all gay. This thing sits in my garage. It's never parked outside. Ever. Huh. Anyway, Genrite, your powder coating sucks. Well, at least on this <laughs> set of corners that you, that you made. Well, interior, yeah, we got some shit going on in there. There's the rest of the switches on that super expensive switch deal. It's really nice. B&M shifter with a Hirsch shift ball. NV3550 socks. It's like stirring a big bucket of baked beans. Don't like it. Like the X15 way better. X15 with a Hirsch shifter. Awesome. This with a B&M. It sucks, but it sucks less than the stock shifter. Let me just put it that way. I added... Don't mind the paint work, because I ran out of paint, and I just had to get it done. But... TMR Customs. Stanchions. And then I welded inch and three quarter 120 wall DOM. And I uh, welded that to the stock upper bars. And then I welded some inch and a half 120 all DOM as a spreader across there. Just to make the sport cage less sporty. I want to add uh, some triangulation. You know, as Pirate says, needs more triangulation. Yes, it does. Needs that in the front and back. Um, but, I'm hoping that what I added here will 
Give me a little headroom if I actually do roll this fucking cocksucker. Or 2,000 miles. Yeah. I've... <laughs> fuck. 25,000 miles on this thing I put in seven years. Wow, that's pathetic. Whatever. It is what it is. I use it for camping, and that's about it. Anyway, that's the old TJ. Thanks for watching.